Greetings YouTube and welcome to my first of potentially many videos on which champions need to be buffed or aka improved immediately to help them be drastically more competitive in the overall landscape of the game. And today I've chosen four old champions and one new champion. I'll discuss that momentarily as to why. And for this exercise, I want to really limit this to showing you my three-star roster because I have all champions in it, and I can really showcase the differences in PI between the top champions and the bottom champions. So without further ado, the first champion that I want to discuss is way down. Out of the 111 three-stars I have, he is actually at the very bottom of the list, second to last. And as you can see, we have Wolverine, and then it's the freaking Ant-Man. Now, in theory, if you were to tell your friends or family that you play this game, and you opened Ant-Man, they'd probably be like, hey, that's awesome, I love Paul Rudd, I bet he's going to be great. I myself thought when I opened Ant-Man before I had a chance to play him that he'd be probably a pretty cool champion to own. Ant-Man is such a unique character, such a unique personality, and I just figured that would translate into this game. Unfortunately, as we know, that is not the case. Now, I'm going to try to give each champion some suggestions, so if Kabam is watching this, they will hopefully take it into consideration. Now, with Ant-Man, we know that one of the things that kind of separates him from other champions of the game is something called glancing, which means that you have a very hard time getting a critical hit on him because he is so small. But we're not talking about somebody that's like half the size of a champion. Ant-Man is literally the size of an ant. If you think about how big an ant is, we're talking about millimeters. So I have never understood why when you're fighting Ant-Man, you see the glancing instead of what really should be just straight up misses. Think about when you're attacking the vulture and sometimes your character misses. Or maybe a better example would be if you're battling the special two of the hood and he turns invisible and suddenly all of your attacks miss. How much more tough would it be to fight an Ant-Man in Alliance War if more than half of your attacks just straight up missed? You would have to be reliant on the special three in order to guarantee a hit, which would be difficult to do because if you keep missing, you're not gaining any power to build up to actually get off an attack. And this just makes sense because Ant-Man, if you're fighting him in real life, you should, you should just miss. You shouldn't even be able to see him. Nevertheless, connect with him. I also think, as I discussed before, that his PI needs to be raised significantly. I'm not saying you have to put it near Mordo, but at least the middle of the pack. And lastly, Ant-Man needs a higher crit ability and attack boost in order to make him the champion that he really deserves. So Ant-Man's my number five. Now, moving to my number four, this is a champion that, again, without knowing much about this game, I originally thought, this guy's going to be pretty good, right? And it's otherwise known as the Hulk Buster. Someone that, in theory, you would think should be pretty good because his name literally means, I'm going to bust some Hulks. So you'd think at a minimum, his defense would be good enough to counter any of Hulk's abilities. But we know, since Hulk got his own buff, that the Hulk Buster has lagged big time. Now, my suggestions for the Hulk Buster include making his armor naturally as indestructible as, say, a Luke Cage. And this would not be something that you would have to depend on buffs, but would just be built into his overall effects. This would also be something that could translate into a great Alliance War defense. And lastly, his special two is pretty cool. I think it should be unblockable because it's a gigantic beam. And also, if you factor in that unblockable special two, it should last a little bit longer. I'm thinking about maybe even one and a half the length of, say, the special one of Iron Patriot. So Hulkbuster, basically the bottom line is his armor and his defense needs to be way, way, way higher. He needs to be such a tank that even if you bring the best champs, it's still hard to get his damage down because he's practically indestructible because that's what it takes in the MCU to defeat someone like Hulk. Now for the third champion, we are going back to the science class, to the almost the meme of meme champions, and that is our favorite Spider-Gwen. 
Now, I didn't know too much about Spider-Gwen, in fact, because I mostly had been following uh, the, the cartoon show of Spider-Man and the movies. <laughs> I just knew that Gwen Stacy, spoiler alert, she dies. So I didn't get even who Spider-Gwen was. But I've come to realize since kind of reading up on the newer Marvel Universe in the 2000s that Spidey Gwen plays an important role in the Spider-Man universe. Now, my suggestions for her are twofold. The first is that she's mainly a stun champion, so I think her stun should last at least twice as long. So let's say, for example, what would happen if her special two, and certainly special three, lasted stun-wise as long as Storm's special three and Thor's special three? That would certainly give her far more value as an attacker. I also cannot understand my biggest gripe with the post 12.0 world basically kabam realized that spidey gwen needed the option if you're playing her to not have to use the special one to switch her stance but then by doing that they didn't change her special one so it still takes a whole bar of power to do something that you can now do without the usage of power uh, she needs a special one that's a projectile that instantly stuns you uh, maybe it's only uh, like Ronan, although we know in certain cases that Ronan, Ronan's stun can actually be infinite. Uh, but she deserves a similar stun. I also think that she needs a, a more consistent evade, kind of like classic Spider-Man. And lastly, also a attack and crit boost, especially when the enemy is under the effects of the stun. So we are already three deep on this list. Now, the fourth one is the new champion, as I mentioned, and this is a personal... Uh, gripe of mine because Carnage should be the most insane champion to fight in my book. I am a child of the 1990s. I grew up on the Spider-Man animated series and I learned early on that Carnage is the most feared villain in the Spider-Man universe. In fact, I also grew up on my favorite video game system. I'm old enough to love the Super Nintendo. And there was a, a game in particular I fell in love with as a kid called Spider-Man Venom Maximum Carnage. In which it took literally Venom and Spider-Man to team up together in order to defeat Carnage. We have this champion now that I also think looks a little bit underweight. And he hits like, like a paper towel. And this bloodlust ability, I would completely tweak this to where whenever you make the opponent bleed, not only do you steal their power, but you also steal their health. If you think about Carnage and really Venom as well, the symbiote is a living organism that takes the life of its host. So therefore, when you are beating the crap out of somebody in a fight, you should be stealing their health and their power. Just think of how amazing Carnage would be if you stacked bleeds like an X-23 and a Wolverine, and then while you're stacking those bleeds, you're also greatly increasing your power and your health. That is a champion I would be excited to play. And Carnage deserves it. He deserves to be so much more feared. <clears throat> and to Kabam's credit, they said at the New York Comic Con that Carnage was on their short list of people to buff. I'd be very surprised if he wasn't buffed at all this year. And hopefully they will take some suggestions that I've made as far as exactly how to buff him. All right. We are all the way down to our number one. And our number one is who I consider to be Satan himself in Kamala Khan form. I don't understand why this character even exists. We already have a Mrs. Marvel. That's why it's in parentheses, Kamala Khan. And just look at the name Kamala Khan. She's 1K away from being the MCOC version of the KKK. That's not something you want to brag about. And the least you could do is make her a little bit more attractive, right? I mean, if you look at her mask long enough, it looks like she just made love to a rainbow. This champion is so terrible, so unspeakably bad, that you would almost be better off just taking her out of the game altogether because to really improve her, other than, I guess, to keep the poison immunity, you would have to start over. Her special one and special two are terrible. They not only don't cause much damage, but they're so easy to dodge. And then on top of that, she's somebody that has very usage in any other aspect of the game. And I'm sure Kabam, based off of their recent pattern, is going to throw her on some new god tier champs synergy and make that the case. But that's lazy, right? Kamala Khan should either be taken completely out of the game, so you don't have to open her, especially in a five-star crystal, or she just needs a complete overhaul. 
where she becomes somebody just completely indistinguishable from the current form of herself. I think Kamala Khan, if you're going to keep her in the game, she needs some amazing uh, crits, some maybe some shock and power gain. And if you don't want to do that, at least make her a power control champion. But until then, Kamala Khan is the number one champ that I hate to open most because I just don't understand why she's here. Why does she exist? She's a waste of space. And I've already opened her twice, and I just know, uh, based off of my luck in the RNGesus of the five-star crystal, that out of every ten crystals, I'm going to open one Kamala Khan. That is just my curse in the game. So, as a reminder, to recap, I want to buff Ant-Man, Hulkbuster, Spidey Gwen, Carnage, and Satan herself, the KK, almost K, Kamala Khan. Those are the five champions that I think need an immediate overhaul in the next few months, but certainly that list is not complete at five. So, who do you think needs to be buffed, and how would you buff them? Comment below and let me know. I would love to do a follow-up video to this, and if your comment is awesome and uh, makes some good points, I would even be happy to give you a shout-out and read your comment and for as far as viewer feedback on how to improve champions hey we all love this game if you're in this community you know you don't want to open a champion and certainly scream things that your great grandmother will haunt your dreams because they're so offensive and the less champions we have that cause depression the better i'm so thankful that red hulk as well as luke cage were buffed we're also seeing a pattern that the science class in general is just mostly trash and needs to be buffed in general uh don't even get me started with Sentry. That'll definitely be another video for another time. So that's my top five need to be buffed ASAP video. Uh, if you're going for Blade, you have about another week to get him. So I wish you the best of luck. And again, comment below. Let me know who you think should be buffed and how you would buff them. And thanks so much for watching and continuing to support my channel.